we start show <ride> Ciao a tutti, ho il piacere di avere qui con me Greg Foote, che è un grande presentatore scientifico eh, inglese della BBC, è un mio collega divulgatore scientifico e io ho il piacere di intervistarlo perché lui è qui a Roma per il suo programma e sta filmando qui delle interviste e abbiamo finalmente l'opportunità di conoscerci da vicino. Thank you very much Greg for your time. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we've I've, we watch each other's work on Instagram uh, and YouTube so it's great to be able to meet while I'm over here in Rome. I have any questions about uh, your job because uh, it's a very special opportunity uh, to see you in Rome. And what are you filming in Rome now? Well, I'm not allowed to say yet. Um, but it's a, it's a new BBC TV series. It's a, a secret series or you can... Uh, well, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not been announced yet, so sadly I can't say, um, I can't say much about it yet, mm. but it's, um, it's science and it's technology. And when was uh, your uh, passion for science born? When I was a child. Uh -huh. So I think that um, all children are, are born um, curious, asking questions around the world. Every time, child so is born a scientist. Hmm. And then, uh, you know, we go to school and, and, and something changes, you know, we, we learn that there is a subject called science and maybe some people lose, lose their passion. So, you know, I, I've been a scientist since I was a kid. Everybody watching will have been a curious scientist um, as a child. I just, I, just, I just loved asking questions and, and finding out what makes the world tick, we say, uh, and answering those questions and I've just, I followed that passion. <laughs> And when did you start your career as a YouTuber? Oh, well, I first started um, making TV programs about science. Gosh, just over 10 years ago. Oh. <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> 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 oh. um, so that was, um, that was making a children's program um, in England. Uh, where we made children's invention ideas a reality. Um, and then I kind of moved from there. I moved behind the camera and worked as a, a, a camera operator and an editor and a director, like I know that you've also, uh, you, you've also followed that path. Um, and then I started making more TV programs for, uh, for older children and then adults. Um, and I've just been doing it ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Your YouTube channel uh, has uh, 25 million of views. Uh, what is your secret? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've, I've worked with a lot of um, interesting people on YouTube. So uh, most of those views have come from my work on a BBC YouTube channel that I've worked on for probably the last oof, eight 10 years. I started making content for my own channel as well. Some videos there have done really well. I've got one video where I'm in a submersible, like a submarine, uh, and, I'm, and I'm diving down into the ocean, uh, dive down to a thousand feet. What is the age of your main audience? Uh, well, I guess I, I'm kind of split. So I would have used to have answered kind of eight to 12 year old um, children and I do a lot of talks uh, on stage live to, to those audiences. I'm now doing more stuff for older audiences. Um, from YouTube uh, you became a science presenter on TV for the BBC. Mm. Uh, did you change anything about uh, your kind of a communication with the audience on TV? So uh, there's a different language between TV and YouTube. You know, there's a different uh, speed of the edits, there's a different speed that you talk, um, and I, I think you just need to kind of learn that, that grammar, uh, and it is slightly different on the different platforms, but, but um, no matter what I'm doing where, I just try to be me. Yeah, true, true and real to me and share kind of my passion, you know, which is what you do so well <laughs> so as well. The secret is to be ourselves. Yeah. You, you are also the performer of um, spectacular science uh, demo shows. Yeah, I've been giving live shows on stage all over the UK and now around the world for, for many, many years. The most successful uh, live show? 
Oh gosh. Well, I do one about um, the dive that I've also already mentioned, the dive down into the ocean. Oh. So I've got one talk that's called Deep Ocean Lab, and it's all about uh, some really interesting research that was being done down in the ocean and uh, kind of unpacking uh, lots of uh, biology and some physics and some chemistry of the deep ocean and what we are doing to the ocean, how we're affecting it. Filming your TV shows, uh, you live with many exciting experiences. What was the most extraordinary circumstances that you lived on the set? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there was a YouTube series that I did, um, oh. which was um, every episode was with a different scientist around the world. And I was, I was working with the scientists to help them tell their story. And there was one where we really wanted to uh, get a volcano erupting fact, on the video. Yeah. And, um, and we went to Japan which is where the scientists did their main work and uh, we were like oh please please we really want a volcano to erupt <laughs> and we arrived and uh, off it went and we got some great footage um, and then like not long like 30 minutes 60 minutes later it went again um, so that was incredible to see like the power of nature um, and to be able to film it and, and make a video about it so it was a very great experience. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, you travelled a lot and you have a, an overview of many places of the Earth. What is your impressions about the health of our planet? Hmm. Mm. People say the planet is struggling, but the, the thing is, you know, we could do anything to the planet and the planet would bounce back, hmm. right? The planet has recovered. Uh, many, many times over our history. Um, what will not recover is us, is humans. Mm. So if we keep impacting the planet at the same rate, in the same way that we do now, then we will change this planet. This planet will not be able to support us. So we need to start respecting the planet, mm -hmm. um, thinking about our waste, uh, you've talked about plastic pollution. Yeah. I've done work with Blue Planet 2, about, um, which is a BBC program all about plastic pollution. I think it's important to think about the amount of food that we waste, where we get our food from, uh, and our relationship with the planet. The planet will be fine. We will not. We're not. We have to understand uh, the right way uh, to use uh, our knowledge uh, yeah. to make this planet uh, a better place. See. Si. Yeah. In fact, in my videos, I often talk about the pollution problems and especially about the plastic pollution. What is your point of view about what we are doing to save our planet from the plastic? What could we do more to make it uh, better? It's been fantastic to see over the last um, one, two years, especially in England, that thanks to the program like the BBC's Blue Planet, Blue Planet 2, uh, people have started taking more responsibility for their, their waste. They've been telling uh, companies, I do not want this much plastic on my packaging. It does not need to be here. Or they've been taking the plastic and they've been making sure that they recycle it. So I think that's um, a really important step. We can all do our part. We can also think about uh, all the other ways that we create greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. um, how much water we use, um, how much we throw away. Um, and I think if we all do our own bit, then that will really help. Uh, we are science communicators. And for us, it's very important the future of our planet uh, that uh, kids and young people study on STEM. Uh, how we can uh, encourage them to become uh, more interesting about sciences? <laughs> so um, I think it's just, it's just, uh, it's what you do very well, you know, it's, it's, it's sharing our excitement hmm. so that the children can um, see that it is okay and great and cool <laughs> to be interested in the world and to encourage the, the children to ask questions, right? They have so many wonderful questions in their mind. Um, and I think the important thing is, do not be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions, find out the answers, uh, go on adventures outside into forests to find out the answers, read books to find the answers, uh, talk to other people to find the answers. Uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing world. Uh, let's try to work out how it works and, uh, and enjoy that journey.
Thank you, Greg. I, I love uh, uh, on, uh, on YouTube uh, your videos also with Betty and uh, your incredible adventures uh, around the world. And I have a question. Okay. When will you film an adventure in Italy? together well <laughs> we have been talking uh, yeah. about that recently uh -huh. uh, this is my first time to Rome so uh, hopefully we can come back to Rome or Naples we were talking ah, about Naples, would be an my city right you will be my guest would be an amazing place so um, yeah hopefully we can we can talk about that and find some time when we're not busy doing lots of lots of other things because there is so much um, amazing stories to tell in Italy uh, and uh, I've been to Italy before in other places, but not, not this area, and, and I love it as a country. I really do. So I wait for you and Maddy uh, again here okay. in, in Rome and in Italy. Sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> allora, grazie a Greg Foot. Seguite le sue meravigliose avventure su gregfoot.com. Eh, veramente credo che sia uno, una delle persone eh, che in questo momento eh, si sta impegnando di più per divulgare la scienza soprattutto tra eh, i giovanissimi e quindi thank you very much for your work uh, especially for the young people uh, to understand what, what, what is important the science uh, to improve our skills and to save our planet my, my pleasure <laughs> and so great that we got to meet while I was over here Superb, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Grazie, Greg. Bye. Grazie.